Hello and welcome, beloved viewer or listener, to our wonderful series here of interviews with the contributing authors to You Matter, women reclaiming their power are changing the world. I'm Sylvia Becker-Hill, your host, and I'm so delighted you're joining us here today. And I have here today with me Susan Fowler, who I have the honor to claim to be a friend of mine. But first and foremost, she is already a multiple times best-selling author. She wrote the hit book, Why Motivating People Doesn't Work and What Does. And she wrote the Master Your Motivation book, which is one of my favorites. I pick out probably every two weeks when I work with my executive clients or struggle with my own healthy habits. And she is a contributing author to the iconic series she co-authored with Ken Blanchard, Self-Leadership and the One Minute Manager. And last but not least, she is the proud founder and president of Mojo Moments, an international training company with 20 global partners. Susan, thank you so much for taking the time to join me here today. My privilege. Thank you. Susan wrote the beautiful, amazing, touching chapter in You Matter in our book, The Power of Building a Bigger Heart. Mm, I love this so much. So let's dive into the questions, my dear. What does mattering mean personally to you? You know, you were the one that introduced me to that word, <laughs> mattering, and I love it. And the reason I love it is because it's, um, it's active. It, you know, we all matter just by the fact that we are on the planet. But if we understand that the way we show up matters and that we have so much power to um, help other people matter um, in ways they might not have thought about before. So I'm a great believer and my work um, has really revolved around self-leadership and motivation. And so when I think about the concept of mattering, I think about people accepting responsibility and taking initiative. I think about people creating optimally motivating environments for themselves and others. And so um, for me, this book was so important because it's talking about women who have proactively overcome extraordinary circumstances and um, come out on the other side with so much wisdom to share. So it's not only that they matter, but it's that they are actively mattering. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Beloved viewer, listener, with all these interviews, my invitation as a publisher of this book is always to really get the essential intention we have for you. The message is you matter. And you are do a lot of mattering in your own life. So I hope you get inspired by Susan's words to think about the active part of that. There's this fact, we matter, you, you, you matter. And then there is the mattering, which is an ongoing active process. And the reflection for all of us every day newly, how today can I do something or be a certain way so that I'm in the process of mattering. I love that you, Susan, make this emphasis, like, like with, a, with my pen, you make a line under the ING. It's, <laughs> that, right. This is big because most people, yeah. and, and you are not the first one. My husband, who is an English native speaker, he's doubted me. He said, honey, you're making this up. This word doesn't exist. <laughs> I had to prove it to him <laughs> going on to Google. <laughs> <laughs> Prove it. No, it's an accepted word in the English dictionary. But Sylvia, you know, the ultimate way of, of mattering for me is to create new words. I mean, think about Shakespeare, who added 10,000 words to our English language. Um, I just I just think that being able to create words and 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 create, you know, create um, yeah, change because words are energy. Yes. And so words can shift our energy. So I do think there's a difference between the kind of matter that, you know, is static um, versus the kind of matter that's moving and making things change. Thank you. I take it on. I'm the ambassador of the matter ring. <laughs> what I also just heard is there's a ring 
in the word ring. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> so then let's connect it with the other second theme of the book. So we have the mattering and we have the theme of power. So how do those merge? So what does it mean for you or when? What are the moments in your life, in your daily life, when do you feel powerful, my dear? You know, um, that, that's always been a, a challenging question because so many of us have a negative connotation of power. And so we think of it as abuse or coercion or manipulation. And the thing is, is that power is like energy. It's, it's neither negative or positive until it gets used. Um, and so it's the use of it that, that gives us the, um, you know, the outcome, the intention of it. And so I have always appreciated um, Gracian. He was a, a philosopher, uh, Balthazar Gracian, who said, the sole advantage of power is the ability to do more good. And my, my mm. model for that has often been Mother Teresa, who was a diminutive, you know, um, small, you know, in stature, little woman. And yet her ability um, to, to make a difference was huge because she actually had tremendous power, but it was the power to do more good. And so um, I was, I've really been thinking about this because uh, if I could just share just personally real quick, um, you know, I start during COVID, um, I started this new company, Mojo Moments, and I have a lot of young people that have come on board from all over the world. So we just had a team putting our website together um, that's from Israel and Romania and the United States. And, and we were all just working like crazy because it went live yesterday. And I just realized how powerful I felt orchestrating this young group. But the reason was because I was in over my head. I had no idea what I was doing and I trusted their expertise and was able to give them full credit. I paid for it. I orchestrated it, my vision, but they executed it and they did it in pure joy. And they're so proud of themselves. And I've never felt more powerful. And you know, you hear you hear that it's, it's it sounds so trite now to say, the more you you know, power is unlimited. So the more you give away, the more you you get in return. I think it maybe takes for me. It took me um, a lot of years of living and maybe a little bit of wisdom to finally recognize that I didn't have to grab for power. If I give it away, it just truly comes to you. And so, I don't know. That's just been my experience is to be able to do more good for more people by giving it away. I love what you said. And uh, you know me, I'm the German straight talker. I love what you said because of its political implications. Because I think what you just said, if everyone or let's say more leaders, men and women in whatever organization, politically or, or NGOs or corporate, would take that on because it's a complete paradigm shift in power yes. when we come from abundance that power is limitless as you said we don't need to grab for it more and more we don't need to compete any longer we don't need to fight for status i mean the whole concept of hierarchy which is the key symbol symbol the pyramid of structure in patriarchal organizations and corporate is based on the belief that power is limited and that you have to fight for the tiny slice of pie chart or slice of power right. for you to get. So it's the implications of what you said are huge and I agree with them, I underline them. And this is, this is part of my life's purpose and the mission of my company to add stories, especially women's stories to human history that change, that change the history. Yeah. Which brings us to the next question. You are a highly accomplished, multiple times best-selling author. You don't need another book, but yet here you are contributing to You Matter, how women reclaiming their power are changing the world. Why did you write your chapter? Why does our book, You Matter, matters? You know, um, I hadn't really thought about it until you asked the question the way you just did. Um, I have never had an opportunity because I've always been geared to being very businesslike and pragmatic and 
working within the uh, business world to really share something more personal and um, that I hadn't talked about before. And, and when you brought to me this book, I suddenly thought about um, the most important person in my life who had really shaped, I think, the person who has my value, that, that shaped the values, many of the values that I have today and my approach to life and work. And it was my younger sister, Terry, who was born uh, with brain damage and paralyzed from the waist down and how she opened my world to such a, a different perspective. And this book gave me voice to share that story. And from people who have read it, um, I think that it could open their eyes as well. And that leads to the other reason that I wanted to do this book is that the other women who wrote this book um, are, and this is going back to what we were talking about earlier about the nature of power. The nature of power has typically been seen as having power over resources or people. And what this book does and the, and the authors in it is it expands our notion of power. So like you said, we think of power as limited and, and because we do, yeah, people are grabbing for it and fighting over it. That's what the, the whole book, of the Lord of the Rings was all about was the whole, you know, grasping for power. And so what I think the readers will get from this book is what I've gotten from the community that you've built of these amazing female authors is how women can bring a different perspective of power that expands our notion of power and makes it accessible to every single human being. Because in fact it is, but it's our own limited perspective that keeps us from our ability to do more good from the power that we have. Oh, I have goosebumps running up and down my spine. So beautifully said. And beloved viewer or listener, you will see a few links here on uh, my YouTube channel uh, to guide you towards the book page. And there you see the list of just the chapters before you even buy the book. Every chapter title starts with the power of and then the unique thing the unique face the new unique um what's what's the english word uh, a unique perspective. Perspective. So i have the image of a diamond the facet that's the word oh. the different facet, facet or the different face of power power has so many different facets and literally beautiful faces symbolically here by the faces of all the contributing authors and that is what the book is about, so that we all drop the notion that there is only one facet or one face of power, literally, that power is so multifaceted. And you, beloved viewer and listener, we invite you to literally see your own facet of your version of power. You could even play the game. If you were a contributing author to our book, what title would be above your chapter at the start of your chapter. Yeah, this is just nice. a beautiful way of integrating it and making the book your own. So last but not least, I have to create the bridge between your amazing body of work. You have dedicated now your, you, I can say, I think your life. Yeah, I mean, you worked in a lot of different wonderful topic areas of leadership, but now I think you have dedicated your life to the science, the science of motivation and you are living it. So how does the science of motivation intersect with the theme of you matter, women reclaiming their power are changing the world? Yeah, um, this was a profound connection for me because um, my work is based on the scientific theory of self-determination theory that operates under a premise that our human nature is the desire, the need to thrive. And that thriving requires not just physical energy and physical nutrients, but psychological nutriments, that, that it's our psychological well-being that actually enables us to thrive. And there's three psychological needs that we need for thriving. And as I look at the chapters and the women who wrote this book, and what I think the readers can get from this, is they recognize one of the psychological needs is choice. That even when you're in the most dire and most extreme circumstances, which some of these women have been in, you know, Sylvia, you and I were just talking about what a privileged life we live 
and, and in some ways so protected and, and how some women um, have lived in highly threatened, volatile, um, life challenging circumstances. But throughout that all, like Viktor Frankl in Man's Search for Meaning, this book is about women's search for meaning. They, they had choice. They, they recognize they have choices. And the choices they made are based on the second psychological need for connection. In other words, they were able to find meaning. They, they, uh, they made choices based on very high quality, thoughtful, reflective values and a deep sense of purpose. And, and so, so you get a sense of what it means to have choice, connection. And then the third psychological need is competence. And I think what's really important is that oftentimes when we're in challenging situations, the reason that we're not optimally motivated is we don't know how to cope. You know, look at what's happening with COVID. We don't have the competence even to wear a mask. You know, it's like your eyeglasses fog up. You feel like an idiot, you, you know, and so we don't have the competence to deal with it. And what we learn is that competence doesn't mean you've mastered something. Competence means that you're recognizing that you're growing and learning that you have an opportunity to make progress. And you start to notice that you're not the same person today that you were yesterday. And then you feel a sense of gratitude for that. Mm. Um, and so I think this book is a brilliant example of women who have created an environment and experiences for themselves where they can be optimally motivated because they've made choices They've experienced and deepened connection and they have built competence. Wow. Wow. I'm speechless. This, wow. Thank you so much. This is so brilliant. And you gave, you just gave a gift to you, beloved viewer and listener. And I'm underlying it so that it's hopefully really lands consciously in your awareness. I think, Susan, what you just gifted to all of us is the concept of hope. Mm. that it's not yeah. about mastering things it's about becoming aware of how we grow and learn you know um, different when, huge different paradigm the, re yes. the research in neuro uh, neuroscience research shows that when you are on a mindful space it activates the same part of your brain as when your three psychological needs for choice connection and competence are activated wow so wow. yes it's, it's, it's all connected it's all interconnected. Yeah. Beloved viewer and listener, if you want to learn more about the three C's Susan just shared with us, buy her book, Master, <laughs> Master Your Motivation. Buy her book, Master Your Motivation. And please buy our book, You Matter, How Women Reclaiming the Power Are Changing the World. If you watch this video before November 12th, 2021, it's not out there yet. Our launch day is November 12th, 2021. Please support us in our bestseller thriving game by buying the book on launch day, Kindle, just 99 cents or the equivalent in your country currency of 99 cents US dollars. The price will go up a few days later. And on Friday, the 3rd of December, the hardcover and softcover book will be available as well. And whenever you watch this video, just know that we wrote this book as much as we enjoyed our company. We wrote this book for you because we all believe you matter. And we also, all contributing authors, we love to hear from you. We all are present on social media. You can reach out, you can share with us what's your favorite chapter, what did you learn, what did you find? So please do that. We, yes, we all are busy, but we are also available and reachable. Thank you, Susan, so much for not only the contribution to the book, but also showing up here today the way you did and, and connecting the dots from your own life, your own research, because this is the other thing. It's about connection. The authors created such a beautiful new connection of sisterhood, which I know will live beyond the book project. And, and I think people will feel that energy when they read the book, Sylvia. So thank you so much. You're so welcome. Thank you, beloved viewer and listener for your time. Have a great day and enjoy our book. Bye. Bye.